Okay. Um, good evening, uh, my dearest uh, uh, practitioners, <laughs> as we are referred generally by our council. But yes, uh, my dearest colleagues, uh, health workers, um, a warm welcome um, to today's session. This is an info um, session. We host these um, sessions once a month. Uh, where we don't discuss clinical issues and topics, but we just look at the important updates that we need to receive as health professionals, which would then um, enhance our ability to, to partner nicely with our council, but importantly to comply uh, to some of the requirements. So you are all uh, warmly welcomed. <clears throat> this meeting is officially <laughs> um, opened. Um, just to say that um, this is the outline for today's session, you know, just to officially welcome everyone, then just uh, one or two slides to introduce uh, this platform to those of you who might be new, then we will go into today's um, information session. Um, if time allows, we will then um, go through the HPCSA website. I will use my account to demonstrate, uh, you know, and help you, those of you who might be um, struggling, and then the Q&A, and then we then do our closure um, right there. So, yes, so firstly, to just say thank you very much for joining us. I would like um, to officially welcome <clears throat> our guests from the... Health Professions Council of South Africa, um, today represented by Mr. Paul Mbodi, who is the head of division uh, for professional practice um, at the council. Um, he will advise um, later on if he's got other delegates, which he will then um, introduce. But also I want to appreciate people that I call the friends of the platform. These are our instructors, facilitators mostly, who are specialists in their fields, um, who have committed to professional development and the need to support health workers to be um, competent um, workers. Um, in terms of the platform, just to say that the, the platform has only one mission, which is to improve patient care. And our theory is that if we are able to make available educational resources and evidence-based education. We should be able to help you to change and improve your clinical practice and eventually become a competent um, clinician and be able to serve um, our people a bit better. Remember, we are a membership um, organization and our members enjoy you know, our weekly free webinars uh, for free. They also have access to a, a, a library where there's a lot of clinical resources and some of the CPD programs that they do enjoy. So if time allows, I would also make uh, some two seconds to show you the platform and what it looks like um, towards the end. But I don't want to waste time just to say that these info sessions are held in monthly. They are open you know, to everyone. There's no cost associated with these events. Um, the aim is to keep you engaged and also to put a spotlight on some of the latest developments um, in our field. These sessions are not supposed to take more than 60 minutes, which is an, an hour. So I'm hoping today's session as well, by 19 hours, um, we should be done. So just to introduce um, our speaker, or our guest who's going to then take us through, you know, some of the critical updates. Today's info session is focusing on the HPCSA's update on the CPD process changes, particularly around the submission, but I'm sure they might cover other important um, updates. We do know that as of Feb 2022, um, as a practitioner, you won't be required to submit you know, any CPDs that you have done through accredited providers by the HPCSA. However, you might still need to submit for other training programs like qualifications that still need to be um, assessed. So today, um, representing the Health Professions Council of South Africa, it's Mr. Mpombodi, who is the head of division uh, uh, for professional practice at the HPCSA. Uh, Mr. Mbodi, are you there? Are you able to hear me and take over from here? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Chairperson uh, or Program Director, you will pardon me 
Yes. Uh, I appreciate the time and the opportunity to to say a few words. I am I am not going to take too long. I hope that I can I can shorten this presentation so that you are able to uh, conclude all the items that you listed at the beginning. Uh, Jefferson, you. please allow me to do the presentation. It says host disabled participant screen sharing. I think I don't have the right uh, to present know. my my content. Uh, okay, let me see where do I, okay. If, if, if that is not the problem, I can just uh, send the okay. presentation to you. You will just give me the rights to, to manipulate the slides if that is okay. Can you try again to share? I've made you host. Yes, now it is okay. it is it is showing. Okay, just to just to confirm from your side, are you able to see my screen? Yes, uh, nice and perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not going to waste much of your time. Uh, I just thought before I I go straight to uh, to the changes that we are implementing on this CPD submission process. I just thought I might just give maybe a background and a context so that maybe the changes can, can be understood by all. So this is where I always start. And I like to clarify this because uh, it is very, very important for me that everyone is aligned to what is currently happening. Okay. Uh, in terms of section 26 of the Health Professions Act, the one that really made us to register with cancer, it says that compliance with certain conditions relating to CPD is a prerequisite for continued registration. Strictly speaking, it means that without CPD, proof of CPD compliance, we are not allowed to register or renew our registration or continue with that registration. But uh, Council has had its challenges previously in implementing the CPD. Uh, I must tell you that the compliance rate of the CPD was not was not very high uh, for the longest time in certain professions. Few professions were very compliant, but others were not. And uh, there was a time when the HPCC has had enough of this uh, low compliance and decided to take action. I think it was about 2015, 2016, a lot of practitioners were suspended from, from practicing just because of non-compliance to CPD. After then, the HPCC tried to implement the random uh, sampling of practitioners to check for CPD uh, on a bi-monthly basis, which was giving us some sort of a representative uh, compliance checks, but it's still not, not sufficient because this act in fact requires everyone and then that is when we started uh, to see uh, of what we can implement to ensure that each and every practitioner at each and every given time uh, can, can uh, validate their compliance with the HPCC. But as it stands, the requirement linking CPD to registration is deactivated and uh, I just wanted to highlight that because uh, some people, when they are trying to re-register, they are given a notice about CPD and they think that is blocking them from continuing and that is not the case currently. But other than that, Chair, uh, this is the act that empowers the HPCC uh, to make conditions relating to CPD, all the guidelines, policy rules, and so forth, the nature and the extent in which CPD will be undertaken by the practitioner you might uh, realize that different professional boards have got some uh, uh, different uh, CPD requirements and so forth. This is this is the nature and extent are determined by the profession of which you are registered, and then uh, as such, then then it's implemented by council as well as the criteria and when the uh, non-compliance check are verified in order to implement uh, penalties. Uh, this is done by the professional board where a person is registered, but of course uh, validated by council, or uh, I can just say uh, 
uh, governance oversight is provided by council. Council in this instance, I'm referring to the highest uh, governance authority at the HPCC, which is a 32 member body constituted by the minister. Chair, uh, I'm not going to bother you with a lot of CPD requirements because practitioners are fully aware that uh, on a 24 month basis, there must be compliance to certain requirements. And uh, that is where the, the compliance evidence expire. That is the timeline, even on our system is uh, configured as such. Chair, this is just the, the compliance check to highlight uh, the rate at which each professional board, there are 12 of them at HPCC, are compliant with the CPD requirements. This is after we have decided to include everyone, all 200,000 registered practitioners in the CPD program, because that uh, compliance check that we were sampling, it was only giving us a maximum of 10%, which was not fair because some people were repeatedly sampled uh, due to criteria that we, speak, we put in there, but uh, some people ended up without having even received a notice to send compliance evidence to the HPCC for years and years. And that made them not to think that HPCC is implementing this program adequately. So I, I'm saying that just to highlight that this is when now we have started including everybody after the self-service portal was made available to practitioners. You can see the compliance is still very low. And this is as of uh, November, end of November, 2021. The highest of the boards is uh, the one that they call SLH. It's a very small professional board, but it is, it is starting to uh, breach that 25% uh, uh, compliance uh, rate uh, for those practitioners. The positive thing is that all boards except, except two, but uh, we have reasons why they are not uh, having an upward trend, those two. ECB Emergency Care Board is the second largest professional board in terms of volume of registered practitioners. It's, it's the one with the lowest compliance now, uh, as of, sorry, as of 20, 20, uh, November 2021. And the medical and dental is the one with the second lowest compliance, uh, but with the highest professionals. Those two boards, uh, we made a deliberate decision not to include them in the in the compliance check up to the period that we are reviewing because we wanted to slowly face in uh, uh, these new changes and see. Uh, the amount of work in which we are going to receive and whether the HPCC is able to manage them. So in that way, we are gradually facing in the changes and see increasing our capability based on the demands. That is why it is very low. But the picture is, has slightly changed now because uh, after all nine professional boards introduction into the self-service portal, we received a positive response, I think by uh, by December, we were already we were already about 30% overall compliance, which was a positive sign. That 30% was as a result of over 208,000 individual certificates upload on our database, which was a good thing, but it created a lot of work for us. So we have decided that uh, because this individual submission is not going to stop, Practitioners are continually engaging on their CPD. And now that we are no longer excluding anyone, including me, from this database of compliance checks, uh, we must find ways in order to continually improve the efficiency of the, of this, of the system. Then we said, uh, we have got accreditors who are given uh, this role of managing the entire CPD value chain on behalf of the HPCC. Except one board, uh, I highlighted all there because that is what the guidelines of CPD accreditation says. But there's one specific professional board that have decided that it does not uh, prefer that accreditors perform that function on its behalf. It will do it itself. 
and that is acceptable. Uh, but these accreditors generally are given a five-year period of, of, of managing this CPD information. Uh, the other boards, when they started their new term last year, they decided that no, five years is too long. We need to give a shorter time. Some have given one year, some two years, and so forth. But uh, the accreditors are generally the treasury institutions that does the, the health science education, the committees or, of the professional boards or the professional associations, uh, not those ones that are being involved in managed care uh, processes. These accreditors, uh, you are very familiar, I'm sure, are just those entities with the in appropriate infrastructure to manage the CPD on behalf of the HPCSA, and uh, they can provide information as and when the HPCSA want. The accreditors uh, are allowed to levy fees, are also allowed to give authority to, to the other entities to actually uh, facilitate the CPD event. So I'm not sure if the, this entity is an accreditor, accredited provider or service provider, but that is not the case now. Uh, it's not important. What is important is that the accreditors shall be doing this job on behalf of the HPCC as dedicated. And uh, these accreditors generally will, will provide uh, a CPD accreditation uh, rights uh, through the accreditation number and then that every activity or case and then the accreditor or the service provider or the accredited the, the accredited service provider will provide feedback of the actual cpd event back to whoever whomever they've given or have received those rights from and the practitioner in terms of the cpd guidelines was expected now to report back to the hpcc on this form that they call cpd a1 that is it is that form that will uh, will will attach with the notice for you to send information to the HPCC, and then you will you will type in your or write in your CPD actual activities, and then and then you will upload uh, uh, sorry uh, scan and send on email to the HPCC to receive. That is actually what was the process of sending this evidence to the HPCC to confirm your compliance with the CPD requirements. And that is obsolete no more. First, because there is that uh, online upload system is no longer uh, required that you send or you go to the HPCC to drop in those information so we can, we can still receive them on online. In fact, that online submission is more of a, a replica of this manual CPD A1 form. And uh, you can, Put input all the information that you will have uh, written or typed on that form and sent. And we will know that it's actually you because uh, you have got your unique uh, login credentials onto the HPCC database. So that is the first changes. No more CPA1R, no more email submission, uh, online portal, and uh, uh, CPD inquiry are also done online. So we have phased out the, the manual uh, at, at one stage. The second change that I want to highlight is that uh, uh, electronic, electronic copy of uh, the spreadsheets that were being given by some accreditors, not all, were sending on behalf of their practitioners uh, is no longer necessary because now we are saying information that we can get from CPD A1R form or individual upload on the system. We can still get it from those accreditors who are in fact doing everything as per the HPCSA requirements. And to a certain extent, uh, there is, a, there is a, a trust relationship between HPCSA and the entities that we are referring to as accreditors or accredited provider, depending on the specific professional board. Then we are saying, instead of individual submission, consolidate all the uh, uh, information uh, 
and put it on a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet will be sent directly by those entities to, to the HPCSA so that the HPCSA can upload instead of individual submissions to, uh, to the system as a bulk pay activity as and when it occurs. Well, some, 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 some facilitators and providers may not have the capability to send us uh, real time or, or integrate with the HPCC. Uh, we are saying that it's fine. You can put it on the spreadsheet in this format uh, where you are putting the registration number of the, those who have attended, the accreditor, the number of the accreditation, and whether the, the CPD that is being sent is for clinical, ethical, or for both, because there are some of the providers who are combining the clinical and ethical uh, CEU points together and then indicate the number and then the activity uh, date, uh, the date when it started and the date when it ended in a, uh, unfortunately, an American format because the company that is, that is working with us on this uh, uh, is using this kind of format, but it is just uh, placing the the date, the month first, and the date of of the activity in the middle, and then uh, and then the same with the with the date at which ended. If you are able to send this within a week, a maximum up to a month to the HPCC, you do not have to be sending a, a individual certificates to anyone anymore even the practitioners will not need to upload those certificates because as soon as that form is accepted by the HPCC validated, that is from the right person, just to a quality check to show that the information is, is relevant and it's uh, compatible with what we desire. Uh, well, when we upload, the practitioner who, have, who are on those forms who have attended are going to receive notification on their SMS to tell them, about the status update. And when they go to the HPCC online uh, portal, self service portal, they're going to see uh, the changes that we have affected. They do not need to send anything anymore. Practitioners will just receive uh, the notification to indicate the status changes. And that we are calling it a bulk upload from the HPCC uh, to eliminate the individualized process because it, it's, it's tedious uh, and sometimes it's, 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 it's creating a, lo a lot of unnecessary administrative work to us at the HPCC. When we created that self-service portal, it was uh, specifically to serve a purpose and it is still serving a purpose. We're not going to deactivate it, but uh, we are just saying those accreditors of which have a relationship with the HPCC or are delegated by uh, the HPCC credit providers uh, will not need to to uh, to be providing certificates anymore. They will just have to send us the information we require and the, the entire process now is done. It's not in individual but in a bulk format. And we are already we have already started the process to make sure that all recognized accreditors and accredited providers by the HPCC uh, share a direct link where now the spreadsheet will not need to be completed anymore. We will find mechanism to allow you to integrate with the HPCC platforms directly uh, and, uh, and or upload your information without even having to send it to anyone. And, uh, the quality uh, assurance function of the accreditors uh, will not be bypassed by this bulk upload because if the accreditors tells us that you are an accredited provider or a provider accredited by them, you send information directly to us, they get an alert when you send it. And when we validate that information, they also get a similar alert. And uh, when that information, uh, is consolidated at the end of the financial year, or sorry, a year, uh, we still send them the report as if you would have sent them yourself. But at this stage, we are saying uh, the report part because we have not started practicing and testing it. 
we will only deal with it later. For now, we want to soften the, the heavy administration from on the practitioner's side in terms of selling this because uh, we can access this directly with the people that we are working with. Just a reminder that uh, practitioners are asked to, to be compliant as and when the professional board where their registers demand. If practitioners uh, are not compliant today, the practitioners to uh, uh, professional board, sorry, request compliance information tomorrow. Uh, then these are the actions that the compliance, the professional boards can take. But for now, I've been going around to all the boards, requesting them not to take any action for now because the change in the system may be impacting the practitioners directly. We do not want to hasten the compliance uh, penalties, such as maybe we can just change you to a supervised practice. Uh, you might find that next month's uh, information is just being brought to the HPCSA and we have to revert. We don't want to do that. Uh, we just will not want to hasten to make somebody write an examination or su even suspend as a drastic measure you know for a specific time period while uh, the system is in the process of transition but other than that that is the changes and that is the summary chapters and i hope i have not taken too much of the time thank you <laughs> very much no 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 i think you 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 took just enough uh, time and i think <clears throat> you are aware that we are uh, health uh, practitioners uh, legal things have been difficult to comprehend but you have made it so easy and uh, yes I've, I've i've noted also a number of questions so maybe before uh, we try and do though i thought uh, 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 we will do the q and a uh, towards the end i think we might as well um, do some of those now um, there was a question around um, verification that the, the provider has submitted, uh, but I think you did address it in a way when you said they will receive um, SMSs. I'm not sure if there's other ways that the uh, uh, practitioners can, can do in terms of follow up and checking. Uh, and maybe it's a question of how do they hold uh, providers accountable uh, for the submissions? Thanks, Mr. Mbori. Thank you very much for that question. It is important uh, consideration that we have taken at the HPCC because firstly, uh, uh, we do not want to be receiving inaccurate information for CPD, whether it is over or under allocation, that is not the intention of this process. So when the providers submit an information that is of query, uh, the, the system will alert us that the information is not is not what it should be and uh, we make a corrective measure with that particular entity and the accreditor and if it's an accreditor then it means that it is directly with us at the hpcsa then we take action similar as to when the service provider or the provider uh, is having a misallocation at the end of each financial year i sit with all the professional boards and we individually look at the uh, CPD activities that we are seeing on the reports and where necessary, we take action uh, depending on what is uh, being presented to us. So that is not going to change. We are still going to be taking action. It's just that this time around, the information is, has been slightly simplified in a format that uh, can be returned back and forth. And if the practitioner uh, maybe, for example, you never attended a CPD activity uh, this week, and then suddenly you are getting a, a notice to say you have been allocated 10 CEUs. You can go to the website on that particular reference on the certificate, uh, on the notice, sorry, then you, you log it, and then we, we attend to it uh, on the HPCC. It is not a submission portal, it is a CPD query portal. This is where we we'll pro make provisions to manage such kind of incidences. I hope I've addressed that question, Chair. Yes, yes, Mr. Boyd, I think uh, in detail. Um, there's a number of comments. I think they're a bit um, related. Um, Cornelia Petla is asking, you know, does formal studying, uh, she's referring to postgraduate studies, can, she, can those contribute to CPD? 
Um, I think it's sort of linked as well to people who, who are asking about some of the congresses and things that are not necessarily immediately, you know, um, reviewed by accreditors, but they would have done some learning through a conference or some university. Um, can you clarify um, how the submission for those works for assessment? Yes, uh, Chairperson, the submissions will now still be submitted on the portal for those that are not accredited by the HPCSA. Uh, I just wanted to, to answer that uh, that says uh, uh, those that are not accredited, but they are for Congresses and yes. any other level, two or three activities. Sorry, I, I'm not sure. I will, I will stop my screen from sharing. I was just was on the chat, to, yeah. uh, to, to, to tell the person that uh, all level two activities, those are those formal, formal type of uh, uh, activities that uh, need not prior ac uh, accreditation from the in, uh, institution. Like uh, when I are studying a course that is related to your work and so forth, you still upload it, we will still very validate it, and then you will you will get your status uh, change on the CPV portfolio. So that is the portal uh, expectations going forward instead of uh, those that 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 would have been would have been given as a CPD certificate share thanks. Yes. So just to put it in a different way. Um, you are saying all um, um, learning or professional development programs um, accredited through HPCSA and the accreditors would be submitted directly to the HPCSA by either the accreditor or the service provider. However, if someone um, has went through professional development through conferences, congresses, they would still need to submit those manually uh, through the portal to the HPCSA. Um, did I put it there? Uh, Correctly. <laughs> yes, yes, Chairperson. I think that understanding is exactly what, what is going to happen going right. forward. We Great have just start. given, sorry, the allocation uh, uh, of five, 1st of February because it was an agreement between ourselves and the service providers. Uh, some service provider thought it will not be, it will not be feasible for their platforms to go back uh, retrospectively and give us that information. So they are going to start on the 1st of February, uh, mm -hmm. while others thought, you know, they already have this on their system. Uh, so it is just for a matter of drawing reports and send it to us. Uh, so that 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 is the reason uh, we are going to be starting there. And I saw the comment chairperson to hijack you uh, mm -hmm. talking about talking about the, the transition into a complete for IR. Yes, uh, yes. We, 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 we acknowledge that is the intention, but uh, in fact, we are still, we are, we've already started working on something like that, but it is still in a very early stage where CPD will not need to see anybody submitting anything anyway. But uh, for now, this is what we have, and hence we are suggesting that uh, uh, we, we use it to, to manage and, 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 and improve a, a lot. Uh, than what we used to do before. Thanks, Jim. Yes, I think that was a comment by uh, Dr. Mabuya. But I, 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 um, just as a follow-up, I think it's, uh, yes, Michael Weber, he was asking, um, this new system and process, is it for the med medical and dental board or all the other additional boards as well? Chairperson, uh, it is for all the boards. As I indicated earlier, Chair, Mm -hmm. uh, we started uh, with the small boards using the online portal. We realized that it's working. And then when we started uh, piloting the bulk uh, submissions, we started with the second biggest, the EMB board. Uh, and then it worked for a while. And then we realized that now we are ready for the big board, the MDB. So all professional boards are going to be phased in uh, very soon rather than later on this new 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 processes so it is for all chapters and in short thanks great stuff and then Lebohag is asking how are the service providers um, identified uh, by HPCSA I think it's more around the process uh, I suspect yeah uh, it is quite easy for us to to manage the service provider one there are two types of service providers accreditation. One, it is done by ourselves as the HPCSA professional boards. 
So there are those that we know we have accredited and they report back to us on a on a on an annual basis. So those ones are not a problem. The second one are being accredited by the service provider. They've already given us the list. Mm -hmm. So we will we will we will only accept those accreditors, mm -hmm. those accredited providers of which have been uh, given authority. Uh, so that we can we can eliminate uh, those ones that uh, does not have the legitimate uh, rights to be giving us information uh, about the practitioners. Thanks. Yes, yes, and maybe just to give uh, our participants uh, an example is that we have the HPCSA, who's our regulator. Um, an example is uh, uh, SAMA, which most of us are familiar with, uh, is, which is an accreditor. You know, then you've got the accredited service providers like ourselves, uh, the CCP, uh, accredited by the SAMA, who then accounts to HPCC. And I think that is the, the, the relationship um, which is being referred to. Um, and then, uh, uh, yeah, I think this is important. Uh, Yeshri, I might be mispronouncing your name. Please forgive me. Uh, but she says maybe all these accreditors and providers need to be listed publicly so that um, you know professionals can know that they are not being taken for a ride. Um, would you like to comment on that as well? Yes, in fact, uh, we are going to be listing them, uh, but we are only going to be listing accreditors and accredited providers because that is the most sustainable way for us now. Sustainable in the sense that uh, the accredited uh, providers are given a year's worth of accreditation to perform this CPD function. So we can at least manage it on an, on an annual basis. The accreditors, they've got a, even longer, five years, like a summer, they've got five years uh, accreditation duration. So it is going to be good for us. What we are not going to be listing now is the individual uh, entities that goes in for one off event. That is the one that we will allow the accreditors to do the managing of, because you know there are thousands of them, and they come as and when uh, the activity arises or an, on an ad hoc basis. So we want that process of accrediting by the uh, accreditors of one of activity to be linked to the accreditors. So when they send us stuff. We will ask Sama, did you accredit this? And then Sama will say, yes, I have accredited this and we are ready uh, for you to proceed. Then in, that is the only way we are going to uh, uh, control the submissions of the one-off. But otherwise, the five yearly uh, accreditors as well as the annual are going to be on our database. In fact, uh, just to say uh, that we are already working on a platform where all activities that have been accredited will be listed on the HPCSA database. And when you want to attend or something, you can just go and click and, 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 and link your activity that you are about to attend to what has been listed on the website so that you don't attend an activity and then later you realize that activity uh, was just given by some, some some company that is not even recognized and you would have wasted your time most importantly. And mm -hmm. uh, if there is money involved, it's even bad because money will have gone down the drain. But that is, that is, that is for the plans, it's not yet uh, in existence. We are just going to be working on those two for now, thanks. Great stuff, uh, Mr. Mboli. I think that was quite um, um, very detailed. Um, and then someone is asking, and I think I will respond to this one, Barbara, okay, will a practitioner be able to track and see how many CPD points he or she has? I want to use my profile, Mr. Mbori, please note I'm not compliant, but I think uh, for learning purposes, uh, my profile would be useful. <laughs> uh, uh, it's not you, I'm also not compliant. Uh, okay. Uh, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing the, the testing, Sometimes they yes. remove my information, they put it back, so it's okay. Yeah. Let's, let's do it for demonstration. All right. Uh, Mamorage, I would like to... Uh, uh, it's interesting that today, even me, I can't uh, or reclaim host. I think we've been changing hosts. All right, great stuff. Uh, let me use this. 
I'm hoping um, you can all see. So this is the HPCSA. We are, we are on the demonstration um, already. So this is the HPCSA uh, website. You can see there's a home button, online services, frequently asked questions, the boards, and then also what you are looking at here, the account, your account, and there's a message around how to renew your annual subscription. You can see my name is there on the top. It means I've already um, logged in. If you click on online services, so your interest in terms of CPD points is to go to online um, services and you'll get the a menu uh, around services that you can access without visiting, you know, or even calling the HPCSA. You see two key menu points around service requests. It's either a CPD query, which Mr. Mbodi referred to, to say sometimes you are allocated an activity that you didn't do, so you want to launch a query, or there's an activity that maybe you did submit and you are not getting a proper feedback. You can also query there that maybe fewer points were allocated, whatever the challenge um, you have. Um, then there's the second point, which I want to show you the CPD update um, request. I'm going to click uh, on it. You can see my professional number there. And unfortunately, uh, I am not compliant. <laughs> so, you know, and I think most of us will find that we still need to upload um, a lot of our CPD um, events. So there's a link there to say click to proceed. So I'm going to click on that particular um, link. If I'm too fast, we are recording this session and then uh, you can also just get the video. We'll post it on our YouTube and also our Facebook. You can just fast track to this section and see. So you can see that I'm expected to have a minimum of uh, 60 points and the 10 um, um, ethics C, uh, uh, points there. And then uh, so far I've been approved for seven. So I still have a lot of work um, to do, right? Now, what you can do here, you can log a query if there's an issue with one of these um, um, certificates that you have loaded, maybe the points, maybe the uh, whatever the issue might be. But I'll just show you how to add your certificates that you currently have. Now, the adding expires uh, at midnight, and I think Mr. Mbori will advise if by tomorrow you can still do your own um, um, submissions for the locally accredited uh, uh, events. However, for your diplomas, your certificates done with universities as part of your own um, development, you can still use this functionality so that the, the council, uh, the, I mean, the, the HPCSA can then assess, you know, um, that the Congress certificate and then allocate points um, as needed. So for me, I'm going to say add new CPD and uh, very soon you will see the menu there. And I'm gonna add a real certificate because I've just received the uh, one nice certificate with 23 points. So I'm going to edit now. It says the name of the service provider, um, which can either be, you know, um, um, let's see. Yes, for this one, I think they, they prefer that we, it's either, yeah, I think the South African Medical Association there, we can just put it there. Uh, on the service provider name. So I'm going to paste it there. They say description usually is the name of the course. So HIV management, TB course, but it must be something that is visible um, on the certificate. So this one you can see it's an aesthetic medicine um, certificate. Yeah, I'm not marketing aesthetic medicine. I'm just showing you. <laughs> then when they say the accreditation number, you go again to your certificate. This is the MBD number for the medical and dental board certificate. You just copy that. You post it there. The start date, when did the event happen? I go back, it was in December the 1st up to December the 3rd, right? So December the 3rd, right there. Type, either ethical, clinical, or both. I think this one was only accredited for clinical points and there is 23 points, am I correct? Yes, there are the points, 23 points, and clinical will be written next to those points. If there was ethics, you would also see ethics points um, just below that. Then I'm uploading uh, this certificate there. I think it's this one right there. You upload it, 
uh, yeah, it's uploaded there, the badge, what, 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 what. If you make a mistake, you attach a wrong document, you can press the dirty box that's been there as a delete function and then you reattach. Then I'm done, I say add a new, I don't know, here I, I almost added a second uh, certificate. So I'm just adding one, then I say submit at the, at the top there, you see. So I have a message there, your what what has been submitted, your CPD has been submitted. You can also copy the reference number if you're going to track uh, and if you have issues later on, and then you'll get an update once everything has been verified, right? Also, when you go back, so let's go back to online services. I just want to show you. You go to CPD update request, uh, Dr. Mawela's profile there. You see, now that the third certificate at the bottom there has been loaded with everything, but you can see it says verified, not yet verified. I can tell you it takes around on average 48 uh, hours. Uh, though they, Mr. Mbodi said uh, a week, a month, but they are quite quick so far. It might be that the volume is not that high, but yeah. Uh, that is how um, um, the, the process uh, goes right there. Um, Mr. Mbodi, I don't know, on the demo, are there any critical points uh, you, you want to emphasize? Uh, Jefferson, thank you for a very nice demonstration. I just want to say, uh, within 24 hours, you're going to receive the second message uh, that is validating that that uh, certificate has been yes. uh, uh, done. And your your point will change, and I'm thinking you will be compliant because it will be 30 now on a period of one year. year. <laughs> and now, as soon as that is validated and you are compliant, the status change, and then there will be a link here at the bottom of of uh, the the status indication, uh, where you can be able to download your own compliance letter. You don't have to write to us anymore. That will appear as soon as the status say yes, you are compliant. Okay. Yes. Great stuff. <laughs> All right, great stuff. Uh, I see the chat was saying this was helpful. It seems like the demo did wonders. And then uh, in the Mr. Mbodi, you have replied to say, yes, uh, we can still upload certificates after tomorrow on the sales, uh, on the self-service uh, uh, portal. Now, um, Mr. Mbodi, in terms of service providers, how far back do we go or do we start uh, submitting via the Excel sheets immediately from activities that start after tomorrow or even activities done before tomorrow um, can be submitted? Yes, uh, you can still submit uh, for those activities that have, have, have occurred. We are, we are even accepting as far back as 2000, no, no. 24 months, let's just say 24 months. 24 months we yeah. want, yeah, we um, want those that maybe are not doing it regularly, not to be disadvantaged by the uh, system alteration. So mm -hmm. we are still accepting any valid certificate. It is still, it is still okay for us uh, to proceed, yes. But if, yes. if maybe you are finding it difficult to, to, to collate all the information, some people were still using manual registers and all, it's okay, you can, you can just do it uh, uh, going forward for as effective from tomorrow. Thanks. Great stuff. Yeah, and I mean to just now on, 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 um, on our side, just to say that um, we were using electronic systems from the start, so we do have um, all the, actually we have the certificates for all the people we have ever trained stored digitally. And we should be able to export lists because uh, I see Michael Weber, you are asking if there's a specific um, Excel sheet. Yes, your accreditor, uh, Michael, so the accreditor accountable, you know, to the HPCSA should have a standard Excel sheet that they share with you which should be submitted. Um, the reason why that process is important is because if the event itself was not assessed and accredited to say your event is six points, it will be difficult uh, for the HPCSA to approve um, those um, um, certificates. But I do have an example, which I will show you um, now, if I can find an example. So it's a very basic um, um, Excel sheet you know, the MP numbers, the, the provider there, it will be, for us, it will be clinical care platform, SAMA or MPC, 
um, the accreditation number to say this was an HIV course, ethical two points paid. So it's a very simple Excel sheet, but then it would have a huge number of participants um, listed um, right there um, on the on the on the on the Excel sheet. And I hope um, that is quite um, useful uh, for you as well. Um, we still have um, um, ten minutes. I don't know if there's any other um, questions. I attained my certificate as an intern. Hmm. I know that for interns, it was not mandatory. Mr. Mbodi, you'll advise. Um, but uh, if you are transitioning to ComSev and those certificates are still within uh, 24 years, maybe they could be used. Mr. Mbodi, are you able to advise on that? Chairperson, uh, you are correct. Uh, uh, any, any registration category before uh, before independent practice mm -hmm. is, uh, or so, or or uh, uh, some form of a supervised practice with uh, with limitations, uh, it's not mandatory. Uh, therefore, the CPD that you we would have acquired at a period where it was not mandatory, unfortunately, will not be recognized because they don't bear the 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 category that is mandatory in terms of the act, uh, including including uh, community service. I think community service is it's a, it's a category before someone can be, can be an independent practitioner. So it is not mandatory, but if you would have acquired a certificate, then uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not going to be counted because it doesn't, it, it occurred before the period where it was required. Okay, thanks. Yes, yes. No, thank you very much uh, for that. I think we are only getting uh, positive feedback from the colleagues. Um, at this point, um, um, colleagues, I just want to thank you for, for attending and to say that as a clinical care platform, we are an accredited um, service provider. We are being reviewed on an annual basis by our um, accreditor. You might have seen, um, maybe I didn't show that part. Uh, let me go back to the website. You might have seen that uh, I've also submitted, you know, a certificate right there uh, as part of the clinical care platform, which has been approved because the platform itself is an accredited provider. So we are not an accreditor. We don't accredit uh, people's events but we ourselves have been accredited to offer a number of programs um, on an annual uh, basis. The last part which I want to share with you is that you need to consider joining the clinical care platform because our members are enjoying a whole lot of you know, clinical resources. You will see categorized by different um, um, topics. It's a growing library of resources, which is free to our members. This is actually a course that a member can just click start, you know, uh, at the end there's uh, assessments that they do and then, you know, you get your one CPD point because these are micro uh, courses. You can see for one hour, 42 minutes, uh, 51 minutes, you know, um, and so on. Uh, you get recommendations based on your clinical interest, based on your peers. Um, and so on. So I really want to encourage you to say, uh, as a platform, we are here for you. And I hope that uh, you will find value um, in partnering with us for your own professional development. Um, colleagues, in the absence of any questions, I just want to say thank you um, to you for honoring this event, but importantly to the HPCSA, Mr. Mpombori, I really appreciate you. You have made this session to be very fruitful, uh, you know, very simple and to the point. And based on the feedback uh, we are already receiving, it seems like everyone is quite happy um, with this session. Um, colleagues, before I close, just to check, is there anyone who wants to raise their hand and make that last comment? Otherwise, um, 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 before Mr. Mbodi, okay, Mr. Mbodi, I'll give you a chance now. <laughs> Let me ask, yes, uh, Jayashri, I'm going to allow you to talk just to hear at least uh, one voice. You may unmute, uh, Jayashri. All right. Yes. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. <laughs> Are we getting any CPD points for this webinar? <laughs>
Ah, you know, this was informational. <laughs> I, will, I will ask the accreditor whether there can be any point on this uh, ethical or something, but I doubt that there's a point. It's more informational. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. Was that your only question? Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Yes. I will. I will write the proper feedback once I've spoken to the accreditor. But I doubt. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Body. Yes. Uh, in closing, and uh, everything you want to say. Uh, just, 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 just three things. Very, very briefly. I will not uh, spend too much time. I like your virtual background, Jefferson. It makes oh. me. It makes me feel like I'm not at work. <laughs> 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 uh, well, Jack, we are we welcome to any 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 criticism on the processes uh, anyone can write to us because we want to improve the system uh, we are sometimes looking like we are moving at a pace but uh, it's all to make things easy for the practitioners we are trying our best on that front the other important thing is that the HPC say it is it is evolving you might have recognized some changes but uh, uh, in the midst of all those positive changes we are still we are still a little bit shaky there and there do not do not be hesitant to give us any form of feedback i think we really appreciate from this point of view thank you very much chairperson for the invitation and for the uh, nice and smooth uh, session i really uh, enjoyed this one thank you very much yeah, thank you very much. Um, yes, I appreciate uh, everything. I see there's, a, I don't know whether I must close. I see there's a question there, you know, um, to say, can uh, employers verify the compliance status of their uh, employees? Maybe let's answer that one, <laughs> Mr. Bodhi. We can say maybe by okay. answer. <laughs> no, uh, Poppy yeah. will not allow that. To, to, to be occurring. So yeah. it, it is still an individual access uh, and, and ability to, to provide proof, not, not the hospitals, because that will result in an even bigger problem for us. Thank you. Okay. No, I think uh, uh, that is taken. Yeah. So, yeah. So we are going to leave it at that. Uh, Dr. Toby, I see you. With that, there shouldn't be any free session. You want your certificates. All right, point taken. Um, you will hear from me. I will check with my accreditor tomorrow, and then I will do my best to ensure that um, um, you know something is done. Thank you very much, colleagues. Uh, may the good Lord uh, richly bless you. Good evening. Thank you. <laughs>